The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 477 Stars Will Aid The soundstone was silent for several minutes until Dorval gave a long, unhappy sigh. Come on, buddy, Billy nudged the stone a little. I want to know. You still owe me big time. You don't want to know, Dorval replied flatly. They won't make you feel better about anything. Mm, Valet frowned. Tough, because I'm not interested in feeling better. I'm interested because right now there's a bad guy running around with one of them, and I need to know what they're capable of. And I'd really rather not find out by having whatever it is used on me. You won't thank me, Dorbel warned. You could steer clear of this person instead. Nope, not happening. Valet shook her head. Partly because I don't wanna, and partly because I can't. I need to know this science guy, and you're not looking for my thanks in the first place. Nightmare modules are extracted from obsidian, Dorval said. Just like you. This is your last warning. Valet glared at the soundstone. Tough. Even more reason why I need to know this. Spill the beans, Dorval. The gemstone paused for a moment, then finally relented. They are patterns, shapes and waves condensed to information, extracted from some property in the structure of obsidian that isn't entirely physical. Obsidian is a physically perfect substance without blemish, but upon exposure to certain higher orders of magic, it contains traces. Now, I'm not sure how to explain it to someone of your intellect. They're like shadows. If you examine them the right way, you can tell what made them. After effects of the event and magic that created the obsidian, before it was a meteor in the sky. Valet shuddered. Bananas! You crazy scientists were trying to recreate that? To make more of this stuff? Were you insane? Don't interrupt now that I'm telling you what you wanted to hear. All right, uh, Valet shrank, licking her lips in frustration. We discovered a violent reaction between a chaotic essence of windigos and obsidian. The explosion that ended our research in Ice Reach happened after we liquefied a Wendigo heart using a procedure we had developed for other spells, injected it into a particularly large piece of obsidian, and had our shield spells fail when we failed to anticipate the strength of the blast as it reformed inside. You arrived shortly after, with the entire room covered in ice. You may have thought it was a failed experiment, but even as we were frozen, our sensors in the tower recorded the data we needed, and an automated process finished our work. The shape and structure of the ice crystals generated by the blast were the data we needed, and they were left in records, down in the basement of the tower even when we were gone. Valet stared into the soundstone in rapt attention. I went back to get him, of course. You didn't keep a close enough eye on me to stop it. So many of my colleagues had died for that information, I was duty-bound to retrieve it. I took the readouts back to Anridge and analyzed them, hoping to use advanced mathematics to construct a model of the magic's original form. What I found instead was fascinating. You would find it disturbing. Dorable cleared his throat. Under analysis, the patterns broke themselves into precise blocks of uniform size, under a finite number of states and arranged into clearly progressing chains that I was slowly able to assemble into one long stream. In layperson's terms, letters arranged into words in a language. Whatever magic created obsidian, its shadows were left behind in the form of thoughts or meaning. Scientifically, that is impossible as a coincidence, which means not only did something intelligent exist at the top of the mechanism that created obsidian, but it put that level of detail into its work. Valet was gripping the soundstone hard enough to crush a lesser rock by now, but didn't dare interrupt. Dorval was telling her that Moonglass had been deliberately created with an exact purpose, if that same cause had made her. The next thing I learned was that the language's syntax was much simpler than a spoken language. In Einridge, Sosa was working on theoretical improvements to the finite state terminals used to control communication connections and data capture and playback. We didn't have the physical ability to make them, but there was a theoretical interest in... Machines that could follow a set of instructions moving from one instruction to the next. I read the papers written about these, and the patterns extracted from the obsidian. Even without a way to interpret their meaning, they were similar in structure. Nightmare modules are that. Instructions designed to be executed on a machine. 
Valet swallowed. What, what, what kind of machine? Did he build one? And what did they do? We found a way to use them. This module attacks a living creature's memory, corrupting and twisting it in on itself, or erasing it altogether. After seeing it used, even my curiosity and constitution for the dark sciences was overwhelmed. Now, the research is locked away, and I only allow the spell to be used sparingly and under Ehrenbeis direct orders. More importantly, we learned that there are more than one of them, but not how many or what the others do. Do you understand the significance of everything I've told you? Ah, uh, Valet nearly dropped a stone. Her hooves were shaking so hard. Eh, this stuff is bad news. Like, I like my memories, thanks. They are malevolent. When executed, they act cruelly on harmonic life. They are self-propagating. One thing that is almost certain is that another module has the effect of creating obsidian. They are incomplete. If there are multiples, they all come from a greater whole, and there were fragments of unused instructions in the data we obtained. They are from beyond this world. They fell in a meteor, and they have an intelligent creator. Do you want to imagine what greater picture all of these things point to? Because I have, and wish I hadn't. The swirling vortex of magic that powered the soundstone reflected in Valet's eyes as she stared darkly into nothing. If there's more of them, so you put them all together and have them do whatever they do all at once, and they came through space which no living thing could do, but so... Her ears went flat. Bananas. Are you saying whatever nasty made them could be trying to duplicate itself? Her eyes turned straight upwards, though it was broad daylight and her target was nowhere to be seen. The bear in the moon. Yes, Norval said. Much of this is conjecture. The ice reach module's effects are not. And think. If these instructions were sent here with such insidious precision for foolhardy scientists like me to find, you came with them. You and every other obsidian brand. Why do you think you are here? I... Uh, Valley swallowed, feeling her heart skip a beat. I don't know, Dorable told her. I never found out, or even came up with a good guess. Maybe you will. I told you this wouldn't make you feel good about yourself, however. Here is your mare friend. Maybe she'll help you work it out. Valet, Hammer cried, sounding as if it had taken everything she had to remain silent during the discussion. That's, listen, maybe there's a scary or unpleasant effect from this spell, but that doesn't have to reflect on you. Yeah, yeah, cool, I know. Valet's voice was distant, her mind too busy processing implications to feel anything. Stay here, Amber. I'm definitely gonna need someone to talk to once I, uh, start drawing conclusions. I'm not going anywhere, Amber promised. I'll be right. The soundstone ran out of power. Valet blinked. She blinked again. Banana <laughs> Hugging herself and grimacing, she stopped beating her wings, descending into a loose glide spiraling slowly toward the ground. Durable had been right. She didn't feel better knowing. But now she had to know what Puddles wanted with her nightmare module along with so many other things, and was even less sure she was a real pony. If only keeping the world safe could wait. End of chapter 477